Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike, Phil Krause Survival. Um, I'm doing this for my personal YouTube. I wanted to give you guys a walk around. So this is part one, because I'm filming this in 4K, because I want you to see the details and uh, intricacies of the vehicle uh, in 4K on, your, on this YouTube channel. Uh, so I'll do this part one, and then I'll do part two, the interior, later on. But I want to talk to you guys about the build and what I decided to do for this Go Rig and how what my thinking was when I built it and how I accomplished that. You know, I went with a 6.7 liter turbo, which is a Cummins diesel. I went with the 08. I, I've had five nines before, but they say that the 6.7 is better off road because of displacement, um, a little bit better torque. And so I've had five nines. I decided for the six, seven when I was in Colorado and building this. Um, so yeah, I, I decided this six, seven was the way to go and immediately identified deficiencies. All, all my five nines before were stick shift. They were six speed transmission. First thing that went on this truck is my transmission. That cost me about $10,000. I would say these vehicles, these Cummins are bulletproof, but when you go down the road of getting, um, an added lift, uh, extra horsepower because you delete it, whatever you decide to do, you're going to run into transmission issues. That's just inherent to a lot of these Dodge uh, pickup trucks. Now, the cool thing about this is the load capacity for this rig is about 3,500 pounds, um, depending on how you set it up, which is super advantageous in bugging out. That's why I went with it. My Toyota uh, Land Cruiser, my, uh, my uh, 4Runner, you're looking at 1,500 pounds, not even close to this rig. So the first thing I did was I put a suspension on it. You know, I wanted the, the right suspension. I went with a pure performance lift, uh, which is the long arm lift kit. Um, this lift kit's really cool. It has 2.0 uh, shocks, Fox shocks with reservoirs. Um, it has an upgraded uh, steering components that are part of it. I mean, you want to go robust when you go with a suspension kit for this truck uh, because of the weight. Uh, I went with this kit because this kit in particular was what I was using for um, a Baja chase truck. I was supposed to chase some bikes, winded up not doing it, but uh, still built it out that way. And it's been super advantageous since then. Uh, if you noticed, I've changed out some components along the way. My front drive shaft um, changed out some um, different things on the rear end, upgraded the shocks to 2.0s in the rear end. Um, even added airbags in this case that are Bluetooth controlled from the rig or from the cab to be able to level it so it's not all dependent on these uh, flat leaf springs. Um, but yeah, went, went that route with an upgraded transmission from ATS. And then I went with an EFI live. Um, I deleted the EGR, which get, basically gets rid of the, the uh, emissions, a straight exhaust and five different settings for the EFI live. One being the most uh, economic for fuel and five just being grossly, grossly negligent, just saying, screw it. Um, I get about 20 miles per gallon on one now with the added weight five. I'm not even paying attention because I don't really care. I'm just getting after it. Uh, this is part of the process in dynoing this, this setup with the EFI live and then making sure you're squared away, um, with the best numbers. Now you're going to get, you're going to optimize that performance with the AEM intake, um, with the EGR, uh, delete with a straight exhaust, just adds more horsepower, more torque and allows it to breathe. Check your local, um, uh, EPA, you know, emission standards per your state and Yavapai County and the land of the free in Arizona, we don't even have, uh, an, um, emissions. So I decided to go with the fab four bumpers. These are the most robust bumpers that I've seen for these vehicles. I like them because they have loops. I recommend everybody running a steel loop, especially if you have a big pickup truck. Remember when you change levels with a, in this case, 12 inch lift with 37s, you get up into the big game territory of completely destroying your truck if you hit an elk. Um, I lived in Colorado. I'm in Arizona where there still is elk and big game. Even small game can take out the front end of this truck, and I've seen it happen. Um, I opted to go with a worn um, winch. This particular winch is for self-recovery. Rarely have used it for self-recovery, but it's 10,000 pounds of synthetic line, and I always recommend going synthetic. Uh, it wears more than steel, but still super dangerous, and there's no re really uh, good reason for it nowadays. You can get away with the synthetic. This is a 10,000-pound uh, winch. Uh, also, Casey highlights, if you haven't noticed, 
These are some of the best lights that I've ever ran. I love these, these setups. They're super streamlined, super efficient, and super reasonably priced. Um, this is that S-Pro bar up top. I got the uh, lights in the wheel well, which are the rock lights. These particular rock lights are good for identifying through your mirrors, right? Through all the things that you could see out of, identifying all the obstacles around your, your vehicle. With a, a truck this big that has a, a high center of gravity, you want to be able to see off the sides for obstacles, especially where we're at. Colorado, Arizona, Utah, etc. You can get some dangerous territory. Um, coming off the side of the rig, um, I'll just cover this stuff as I go. I did go with um, Rhino lining the entire vehicle with these fender flares. These fender flares are super advantageous to allow you to avoid slinging debris all over your truck and damaging stuff. Um, this Rhino line has been one of the best things that I've ever done. The guys from um, uh, Earl Scheib in Modesto, California, they hooked me up. They allowed me um, to bring the truck up and kind of experiment with some stuff. They did a heat treated Rhino line on this truck, which is the best coating I've ever seen because I've done Rhino lining before on vehicles. But this setup is super advantageous. If you're around debris like the stuff you see in Arizona, you're talking about pinstriping your vehicle. It's easy to pinstripe that gloss finish. And I'm not interested in, in too many aesthetics. So this is completely in utility. But it's also, it doesn't weigh a lot. People think this weighs a lot. This is about 20, 30 pounds of of paint that we applied to this truck. So it's totally worth the money. I have, I've never washed this truck. I just spray it off and it comes straight off. Uh, yeah, I love this. That's one of the best mods I've ever done. Um, if you go right here and you open the door, you see I got drop down uh, amp research. Um, we'll call these step ups, right? I, you don't need rock sliders in this kind of setup. I, I don't like rock sliders on big trucks because I don't plan on bouldering anything. So I'm never going to put myself in that circumstance. Um, but but also I have a high um, clearance between the ground and then the side of this truck. I want these to be able to step up, but I want them clear and out of the way um, when I'm driving. A rock slider is not really necessary because of this clearance. Like I said, I'm running a 37 inch Falcon Wild Peak AT3W. These are 37 by 12.5 by 18s. Now I run, run aluminum alloy. These are lightweight rims with a bezel that protects the side of the wheel from being compromised. This is not a fake beadlock. This is made for off-road applications. I've cracked the edge of my wheel and created a little leak that I couldn't fix on the trail. With big wheels like this, you want to be able to protect yourself from rocks, debris, etc., from damaging the edge of the wheel. So these are these are completely uh, within the realm of utility, um, especially on an aluminum alloy. Remember, if it's steel, you could just bang it out. Uh, that's what he said. But you don't need to do that because you have this extra bezel and these wheels are super light. I also like how they breathe with slotted rotors. It allows you to get air circulating through there, which you need when you're driving on the road or off-road uh, and you need to stop a heavy truck like this. Look at the life I still have left in these. I, I think I got 30,000 miles on these and they're super, super efficient on and off-road. This is like the 50-50 split for me. I love that 50-50 split. Um, I already covered these, but Look at that, airbags. I decided to do airbags off the leaf spring because I want to be able to level the rear end. As I load this thing down, I'm going to put weight on it. I need to be able to level the truck so I don't get it sagging in the butt and then uh, end up with issues driving it. Um, I could completely feel the difference between the airbags, which run off Bluetooth, and then not having the airbags, which is problematic, I think, with a, a setup like this. It also helps level the AT uh, Overland Summit build that I have on this particular truck. Now, I went with this option because I'm tired of being cold. Um, look at this stuff. This is my go-back stuff. We're going to talk about this tomorrow. I'm going to do a video on getting uh, your go-back set up. But I stripped everything out. Apologize for the mess. But I want to show you how easy this is. So if I come up here, I have two windows, right? Two windows set up where it, it can get air flowing through here. I have a shitter in the back, which is key, right? I have my little setup with an ammo can. I got my cooking stuff, got my patches. But this bed setup sets up in a matter of minutes. Let me show you, let me show you. Uh, not even minutes, seconds. So I'm gonna pick this up, drop this down, um, take these D-rings off. And then right here, they crawl up here. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a tooth. 
Oh God. So I'm gonna take this, unlatch it, unlatch this one, and then simply Let me push up on this. I gotta drop this camera to be able to do this. There you go. Two hands, and then bam. Ooh. See how easy that is? So now that it's set up, I'm getting sorry for the Blair Witch Project. Bam. I set that up in seconds. Simply lift up on it. So now uh, with these truck bolt deck systems, which I think are super cool, you have more space because it runs the entire bed, right? To put all your gear and equipment. But you also have a better platform for standing up. Now when I get up in this bed, um, I have really a, a small step to get up here, but I can handle all my business internally. Uh, now this does get up out of the way. You could push this up to clear the space, to stand up in here, to clean, to, to cook, to do whatever you need. But look, I've run a whole bunch of setups uh, in the past, rooftop tents, all these different setups. I'm not interested in being cold anymore. One, I like a good sleep setup, and this has got an adequate bed for it. Um, but I'm, I'm interested in being comfortable. So this rig, I want to be able to sustain life and live out of. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I did add, actually, let me go over this real quick. I added a, a Titan fuel tank, uh, which is a reserved fuel tank that allows you, sometimes this is a pain, I use my dominant finger. Okay, let's not do that right now. Um, Anyways, I, I usually take a little uh, screwdriver and pop this. It's pretty hard to do. Um, but this is the Titan reserve tank. That's my main. But the Titan ties in to right here, which is 30 gallons right where my reserve would go. And then when I need it on the fly, all I do is I take this, push this button on the go, and then I'm set up for success. Uh, all my stuff is tied in to the... Um, um, this, uh, God, what is the name of this thing? I always forget this, the Switch Pro. The Switch Pro has the light bar, the reverse, my air compressor that's on board, all that stuff, and it's all automatic. Um, so I could run it on the fly, but the coolest thing about this is the wiring. It gets rid of the, all the wiring, it ties it into a harness, and allows you to be more efficient in your power resources. I like that. I'm gonna start this thing up. hear the uh, air compressor turn on but not too loud not not uh, annoyingly loud but yeah guys i wanted to give you a small preview of the truck from the outside next video i do i'll do the inside hope you guys enjoyed later guys